Let me ask you something. What do you think happens to your body when you stop eating and stop drinking? Most of us are familiar with intermittent fasting. Some have even dabbled in 24 or 48 hour water fast, but dry fasting, that's next level. And for some, next risk. Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton and today I'm diving into the controversial but fascinating topic, dry fasting versus water fasting. What's the difference? Which one helps you burn fat faster? And most importantly, is one safer or more effective than the other? I'll walk you through the science, the benefits, the risk, and what I would actually recommend as a physician trained in obesity and metabolic health. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly when and if you should consider either one. And hey, drop a comment below letting me know where you're watching from and if you've tried either type of fasting. I want to hear about it. Let's get into it. Let's start with what water fasting and dry fasting have in common. Both lower insulin levels, boost fat burning, and trigger autophagy. That's your cellular cleanup crew. And both push your body into a state of nutrient stress that promotes healing and repair. But here's the big distinction. Water fasting allows hydration, while dry fasting completely eliminates both food and fluids. That one change, it shifts the entire hormonal and metabolic response. Dry fasting isn't just a tougher water fast. It's a different physiological state, and you'll see why in just a moment. Let's break down water fasting first. Water fasting means you're not consuming any calories, but you're still drinking water. And depending on the protocol, you may include electrolytes like sodium, potassium, or magnesium. This allows your kidney to function normally, helps regulate blood pressure, and makes longer fasts, say 48 to 72 hours, more sustainable. Mechanistically, water fasting maintains hydration, reducing cardiovascular and kidney strain, allows gentler entry into ketosis, preserves lean muscle better during longer fasts, lowers insulin and increases glucagon, which mobilizes fat for fuel and slows down mTOR, which gives autophagy a green light to clean up cellular trash. It's effective, it's widely studied, and for most people, it's the safest form of extended fasting. Now let's talk about dry fasting also known as absolute fasting. No food, no water, not even black coffee. It's intense. But some proponents claim it speeds up autophagy, fat loss, and cellular detoxification even more than water fasting. Let's unpack why. When you don't drink water, your body enters a survival mode. It doesn't just burn fat for energy, it burns it for water. Here's the fascinating part. Your fat cells store triglycerides. Each molecule contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. When you oxidize that fat, the hydrogen and oxygen recombine into metabolic water. And believe it or not, fat yields more water per gram than carbs or protein, around 110 grams of water for every 100 grams of fat burned. It's your body's backup plan. Think about camels. They store fat in their humps, not for energy alone, but for hydration. But it doesn't stop there. Dry fasting also causes a rise in vasopressin. That's the antidiuretic hormone. Vasopressin tells the kidneys to hold onto water, concentrate urine, and conserve every drop of fluid. But it also means uric acid levels rise, which can increase the risk of kidney stress or gout. And because you're not taking in fluids, plasma volume drops, which can lower your blood pressure, increase fatigue, and stress your cardiovascular system. Some studies, mostly from Russia and Eastern European fasting literature, suggest dry fasting amplifies autophagy, particularly in immune cells, possibly due to the sharper hermetic stress. That could explain why people with autoimmune symptoms sometimes report relief after short dry fast. So in theory, dry fasting may push the body into a deeper metabolic shift, but it comes with a narrower safety window. This is not something to experiment with casually, especially if you're dealing with kidney issues, adrenal insufficiency, electrolyte imbalances, or dehydration risks due to climate or medications. So who should choose what? Let's start with water fasting. Water fasting is ideal if you're fasting for the first time, you want to go beyond 24 hours, you're working on reversing insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, or metabolic syndrome, you need a sustainable, repeatable fasting tool. Now, dry fasting might benefit experienced fasters with metabolic flexibility, individuals aiming to enhance autophagy or stem cell renewal in short bursts, those participating in religious fasts like Ramadan, where no water is consumed from dusk to dawn. But again, 
I can't stress this enough. Dry fasting is for experienced fasters only and should be done for shorter durations, typically 12 to 24 hours max, under supervision if possible. Now let me speak to you as a doctor who helped patients reverse obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. You name it. Water fasting should be your foundation. It's safe, it's predictable, and it works. From a physiological standpoint, water fasting allows a gradual drop in insulin, protection of kidney and adrenal function, smooth entry into fat burning and hydration support, which is crucial for every cell in your body. Dry fasting, think of it as your emergency metabolic lever. When you dry fast, your body goes into extreme conservation mode. Fat is burned for both energy and water. mTOR is suppressed more sharply and autophagy may spike, but cortisol rises, uric acid increases, and dehydration risk is real. In simple terms, water fasting is like a deep tissue massage, effective, targeted and sustainable. Dry fasting is like a cold plunge in water. It shocks the system, may offer benefits, but it isn't for everyone. So unless you're spiritually motivated, metabolically experienced, and very well informed, I'd say stick with water fasting for most of us. Dry fasting can wait. So what did you learn today? Fasting is a powerful healing tool. Water fasting is accessible, safe and well supported by science. Dry fasting may offer accelerated results, but requires more caution and context. You don't have to suffer to heal. You have to strategize. And if this video gave you new insights, give it a like and make sure to subscribe to this channel so we can keep building metabolic health together. And hey, check out the next video on the screen or subscribe to my channel here. And as always, continue to protect your nest, nutrition, exercise, stress management, sleep, how you think, and recovering from trauma. I'm Dr. Tony Hampton. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.